Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Tuesday now, the 17th of June, 2025. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Going to really focus on this significant hurricane threat from Mexico. I know there's not a lot of interest at all in eastern Pacific systems from our fan base, but these hurricanes can be very impactful. Think about Otis and Acapulco, 2023. So it is important. I'm going to talk about it then. We're going to look at some severe weather stuff and explain why I'm in Hastings, Nebraska, and a very important lesson to be learned about missing the tornado of the year. I'll explain at the end of today's update. There's a great, I don't know if it's an allegory or a fable. Well, it's legendary, that's for sure. We'll get to that. Again, thanks for tuning in. Let's see what we've got. First of all, Tropical Storm Eric, forecast to become a Category 2 hurricane, on approach to southern Mexico here, and uh, you don't need that down there. Nobody needs hurricanes, right? They do serve a purpose in nature, but when they interact with our interests, it does become problematic for sure. Uh, so it looks like it's going to make landfall down here, and I don't know how to pronounce some of these names, so I'm not even going to attempt, but because of our really nice interactive map, you can read those names yourselves and kind of see where this is headed. Now, Acapulco, I can certainly say that, should stay to the east of there, which is definitely what we want to see because, well, they've already had enough there with Otis a couple years back. But as it does come in, certainly heavy rain, especially for these mountainous areas up here, coastal storm surge issues, the usual, right? So if you have interest down in this area, please pay attention. Please get the information out to people that you know that may live there, may be vacationing there, whatever the case is, Eric is going to potentially be a big problem. And as we know, you see that little two right there, forecast to get to 110. Wouldn't surprise me at all if this becomes a Category 3 hurricane, the first major hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, I think, this year, if I'm not mistaken, if it does so. So here is the satellite. This is the true color moving over from nighttime to daytime. And you can clearly see Eric is ramping up. It's got this big area of energy down to the south. It's going to tap all of that, wrap it in, and then it's going to make landfall again, as we just discussed, somewhere in this region within the next couple of days. Now, I show you the vorticity products a lot, and I want to point this out to you here. Let's see. I guess we will use black to make this pop. There it is right there. That's the Vort signature at the 5,000-foot level of Eric. And that's what I look for out across the Atlantic. And you notice there's nothing even resembling that. Uh, all of this vorticity is stretched out over a large area. Here's the energy that's part of what has been happening up here in the plains. Again, we'll get to that in a little bit. But that is the vorticity signature of Eric down here. And as you'll notice, it's going to uh, get more and more round and more amplified as it makes its way up towards Mexico over the next couple of days. Love this dashboard here from Levi's site, Dr. Cowan. Uh, it, I mean, that's why it's a dashboard. you got everything you need right here. Current satellite, we've already been over that. There's the Hurricane Center track map positioning. Here are the global plus the hurricane models and a pretty good consensus overall that Eric will approach southern Mexico here. I suppose there is a chance... If we get lucky, that there could be enough ridging sitting up here. Remember, a big ridge of high pressure is like a big balloon, a big water balloon, and then this is a smaller water balloon. These are two liquids interacting with each other. It's not a liquid and a solid. That's not how our atmosphere works until you get hail. And then hail is very much a solid, obviously. But in terms of steering patterns, this big high pressure sitting up here, if it expands enough, maybe we get lucky enough within, I mean, we're talking two to three days there. That's not that much time. But maybe it can come in and just skirt the coast. That is not uh, out of the question. So we'll be watching that closely, all right? That's that's a possibility. Uh, the intensity, though, this is what worries me. There is some indication from some of the guidance that this could get quite strong. So we'll be watching that, obviously, very, very closely. And it'll be interesting. You remember the other day I showed you that clip, and not a lot of people watch that video. Come on. I thought it was really interesting to have Brian Norcross talking about AI with how Google and their DeepMind, I think is what it's called, 
uh, trying to capture hurricanes and the track and the intensity. It'll be interesting to see how the Google AI does with this system, with Eric. And we'll follow up with Brian Norcross to see uh, what he learned about it. I'm sure others will be following that on social media as well. But as you can see, there is a pretty high ceiling, just touching maybe on Category 4. And one of the pieces of guidance here, we shall see. That's probably like the H Wharf or something. I don't know. I didn't look specifically. All right. There's the tracks. Uh, we've been over the East Pack. So let's take a look at the Atlantic Basin. Very dry, stable air out here. And you can tell, just look at that, uh, the lack of cloud cover. This is just low stratocumulus, dry, dusty air. It's not as dusty as it has been, but it's just a very dry air mass. And that's typical for June. And one last thing I want to talk about, the Eastern Pacific. And I've been mentioning this from time to time in my updates as we have gone through A, B, C, D, and now E, five named storms in short order, a very fast start for the Eastern Pacific, but I do not believe that it is going to sustain itself that way. The Madden-Julian Oscillation, this pretty robust area of favorable upper-level winds, it makes things just more favorable over a large scale, has pretty much been stuck there. And once that leaves... I think we're going to see a, a downtrend in activity in the eastern Pacific. And there's only a limited area of good ocean heat content. I've talked about that before as well. We'll revisit this after Eric comes and goes. It's already here, so we'll say after it goes, right? And see what the, uh, the damage has been done to the sea surface temperature pattern in the eastern Pacific. But in the meantime, Atlantic Basin nice and quiet all the way across I don't see anything coming up, and we're a couple weeks out from uh, a little bit more than that from the July 4th period. We'll address that later on. I do think what's going to happen is it's going to get very hot over the east, and that's going to keep anything that would try to develop, if it even had a chance, squashed far to the south. So we're going to have to keep waiting probably well into July. All right, so uh, modeling real quick. Just want to show you the GFS. There is Eric coming up there. And boy, it just bams into those mountains, right? And that is the end of that. Pretty rapid uh, strengthening and then a rapid weakening in the Pacific. All right, let's move along. Let me show you this. And I call this segment uh, how I missed with my partner CJ the tornado of the year. Or the subtitles could be how eating at Freddy's, and if you know the Midwest, and there's some other ones in the Southeast, Freddy's, the hamburger place. The subtitle could be how eating at Freddy's would have given us the tornado of the year. Allow me to explain. So we traveled from Deadwood, South Dakota down to North Platte, Nebraska yesterday, which is right there. And we got there in plenty of time. Uh, initiation, the storms forming was about 30 to 40 minutes away. The mesoscale discussion was up. The watch went up. And we were in position. We actually met up with a couple of friends of ours in the parking lot of a gas station uh, just on the north side of the North Platte River and Interstate 80. That would be Paige and Bryce. You might follow them on YouTube. And we saw them and chit-chatted for a little bit. And uh, the plan was for CJ and I, after we met with them and got gas, we were going to go into North Platte and go to Freddy's. I like Freddy's. It's pretty good. I think it's better than Steak and Shake, so there's that. And that would take about 30 or 40 minutes, right? And then during that time, what was just a little blip on radar would grow, and we would, you know, be ready to tackle it. So instead of doing that, and this is what I think cost us the game, there was a Chick-fil-A uh, right across the street from the gas station. And I thought, as we saw this starting to grow, and it didn't look like this. This was It was just a little blip. This is later on. Uh, that's 704, as you can clearly see. Um, I said, why don't we do Chick-fil-A, because uh, it's, it'll be faster. Because our plan was to go, let me show you over here on our interactive map. Our plan was to, the storm was forming like right down here. And it was, again, just a little blip on radar and we wanted it to be able to grow because I was after the hail. The uh, the tornado threat was very low overall, like 2% yesterday. So we were going to go up here 
and let this grow and what we assumed that this would follow and we would let it grow and let it grow and then we'd get over here and cut it off as it moved across like that somewhere in this region and get our big hail. Because sunset is not until after 9 o'clock. We had like three hours and we just figured we will intercept that thing somewhere over here, maybe even farther south. That would be fine if it moved east, northeast or whatever. But nope, it didn't do that. It got attached to the boundary that was down here, stayed there, and after he and I, CJ and I, went to the Chick-fil-A, we did, we left the storm behind, it was still forming over here, and we went away from it, and we cut over here, and to our horror, to our horror, but, but good for Bryce and Paige, that's what happened. <laughs> I mean, people watching on Spotter Network had to be like, why is that one, uh, CJ, I'm not on Spotter Network, CJ is, why are they going away from the supercell? Because that radar image is what it started looking like as we drove away and we're far away up the road. And uh, so we figured, all right, well, you know, by about right here, that's when Paige took that picture and we turned south and tried to get down and come over this way because the supercell and whatnot was over here. And then the road network all through here is just a disaster. And we got there too little, too late. But we did capture it on the 360 cam. The parent supercell is still there, if this will play. Uh, not bad, but, you know, doesn't count. Because that right there, that's freaking awesome. And we missed it because we chose Chick-fil-A over Freddy's. Now you're like, well, what does that have to do with anything? Had we been at Freddy's... Time would have elapsed. We would have seen it look like that. And then we would have been like, nope, we're not doing the hail because we have a rule, no hail when they have a hook echo. And we would have left North Pratt and figured out how to get around this thing. And we would have seen it with everybody else. So moral of the story, always eat at Freddy's if you can when there's a storm brewing or something like that. All right. So speaking of storms brewing, and, and again, that's pretty amazing. Let me just show you the 360 shot. Uh, that's the supercell. Pretty good inflow there. A little bit of a wall cloud still hanging on. And it tried a couple times to produce another tornado, uh, but it just didn't. And so, you know, stuff happens. Always choose Freddy's, folks. So for today, <laughs> we have a moderate risk, and uh, we are in Hastings. We're going to head south towards Pratt down in this region. And we are going to stop at Freddy's over in Great Bend. And uh, you bet, because that will bring us good luck. And we will be streaming live later this afternoon, I think around 3.30 Eastern time. And uh, you can see if we have a little bit better luck today. And then after that, I'm flying home for at least a few days. May come back out later in June. We shall see. Spent a lot of money out here. It's very costly. And i got to make sure I have enough budget for hurricane season, because that is, after all, the channel, Hurricane Track. But we do cover severe weather, and I appreciate you watching today's video and the little comic relief that was our complete screw-up yesterday. Chick-fil-A over Freddy's. Cost us the tornado of the year. All right, have yourselves a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Suddeth. We'll see you live later today on YouTube.